Behind every bit of mom wisdom is a story. A story of a real mom and real kids just trying to love each other well. Whether you're cozied up on the couch with a mug of coffee or out for a walk, you're welcome to join us as we share stories and laugh, learn, and grow together. It's the I'm On Podcast. Welcome to this week's episode of the I'm On Podcast. I'm Abby and Megan and Susan and Chloe are here. And Chloe is this week's storyteller. The story is you're not the only one raising your kids. And we have been teasing for a couple of weeks that we had a big announcement to make at the beginning of this episode. And I'm going to let Chloe make the announcement. Yes, the big announcement is I'm joining the club, <laughs> the mom club. Woo-hoo! I'm yeah. pregnant. So we so we didn't discourage her too much. Yeah. yeah. Bobby's clapping our producer's clapping off screen. He's excited. This is the first time I've officially said it, though I know you heard my husband say it when he walked in the office last Have week. Have you picked up on any of the clues, Bobby? No. No. See, no, you didn't? Oh, wait, you didn't. Oh, Bobby didn't know. Listeners, my husband came in the office <laughs> last week and just said it so loud. I was like, okay, great. We're talking about it now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I um, promise every woman in this office knows that you are. Yeah. Yes. And every man is completely totally. oblivious. Yeah. No, Jeremy knew. Jeremy, Jeremy knew. But I mean, yeah. if, the, if she hasn't come right out and told them, yeah. they haven't picked yeah. up on it. No, oh, Bobby wow. says, no idea. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> well, I mean, we've so our reaction, Susan, Megan, Abby, reaction is from knowing for a couple months, yeah. but um, <laughs> months. we're all we thrilled, yeah. Yeah. absolutely thrilled yeah. for you to join the club. Thanks. But with with this comes a whole bunch of thoughts. Yes, and most of them are so excited. I'm I'm very very excited. I think just all that I've been able to learn through my job, through this podcast, through. My friends who are very much in the same season of life, I'm very, very excited, and so is my husband. Um, One thing I have been thinking about and I wanted to talk to all of you about is child care because I am going to be a working mom, and it's something I've just been thinking about is like, okay, who is going to be looking after my child? And, you know, and and we've talked about preschool. We've talked about nannies. We've talked about all these options. So I kind of wanted to talk to you guys about your experiences, what you would you know, advise someone who's in my position right now. So we kind of had a little bit of a different than normal situation. One, we lived in a city that we had moved to recently. It's a normal situation anymore, <laughs> no. to be honest. There's yeah. True. I mean, true. So we had moved to a city where we didn't know anyone. So we didn't really have anyone in the area that we could ask, you know, what are you guys doing? What are you doing? So we had to really figure it out on our own. And then two, right after we put him in somewhere COVID hit oh, so we were working from home for basically a year like both of us because we live in DC so everyone was working from home for a really long time so um I put him in a half a day preschool and that's what he's in now he's in a half a day preschool and then he comes home has lunch here and then he takes like a good three hour nap he is a good sleeper though so like some of my other friends kids they needed full day child care because they work and their kids are not good sleepers and so they just knew they wouldn't be able to do that um and some of them have to go in the office i work from home so i think there's just a lot of different circumstances that you and your spouse have to weigh of like you know, what's not only best for the child, but what's best for you guys and your schedules and what you're doing. Um, So there was actually a period before we put them in half a day preschool where we were part of a nanny share. Mm. So um, two other families had babies the same age as he as or around his age. And so the nanny felt like she could watch three little babies at one time because they weren't really mobile yet either. And they were kind of on the same schedule. Um, And she actually only had one of them two days a week. So it was two, two babies a lot of the times. Um, So he was in that for a while, which was actually great. Um, It worked out well because they lived close to us and, um, you know, we, we loved the nanny and it, it worked for everyone. However, I will say doing the whole nanny and nanny share situation is tough because it's not always reliable. The nanny can leave at any time. So there's just a lot of factors and you just kind of have to talk it through and decide what's best for you and for the child. Mm-hmm. And it may look different from kid to kid too. And depending on circumstances. Yeah. yeah. So how did you, Susan, before I answer my story behind that how did you decide if you were going to work or stay home because when Megan was born did you stay home I did I worked for Bank of America and um had a really tough boss um and so it really wasn't a choice I mean actually I didn't make the choice till I was actually at home and there was 
no nannies back then, yeah. really. Uh, so to go back would have been, you know, full way full time. There was no working from home at yeah, the bank, right. and <laughs> it would have been. I'll take this money home. I'll bring it back tomorrow. I promise. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it would have been daycare, straight up, probably fifty hours a week. Yeah. So we just decided that I would stay home. Yeah. I do feel like there's a lot of different options these days between like a nanny share, like you said, Megan, or traditional daycare, or there's daycares that are preschools also. Or families or, in town. Mm-hmm, families mm-hmm. in town, yeah. So when I found out I was pregnant um, with my first son, I kind of had like a freak out moment. And, and my natural response is usually like start making plans, start mm-hmm. doing things. I won't like, I won't hesitate. I just start like working things out. And um, I was praying and praying and praying. I don't know if I've ever prayed more fervently than I did Mm -hmm. when I was freaking out about this because I had to be to work at 530 in the morning. Right. And my husband also worked like we left the house at the same time together, like five, five, 15 every morning. And so I was like, how are we going to do this? How do I have a, a newborn and do this? And I remember looking on care.com and this is no knock on care.com. I don't, I can't say anything good or bad about it. Um, But I looked on care.com and I drove by a woman's house, like a woman that offers to watch infants and like had flexible hours. She was in like a really bad part of town. And I remember driving and I was like, Abby, what are you thinking? Why Mm. are you even going here? Like, stop worrying. Just take a breath. You have some time, you know? And Not too long after that, a woman called me who I was acquainted with better than better than acquaintances. I wouldn't say great friends, but, you know, I knew her fairly well. Her sons were a few years younger than me. And she's like, you know, I was wondering who's going to watch the baby after he's born. And I was like, I don't know. And she said, well, I would be willing to. She said, I I don't work. And she said, I would be willing to. And I was like, well, I would like you to come to my house. I was looking at like college students that lived in South Tampa, like so that I could drive from the suburbs to Tampa yeah. with the baby and they could meet me at six in the morning. Like I was thinking all these things. She called and she's like, well, I would be willing to come to the house. I'm like, uh, I'm talking at like 5.15. Wow. She goes, I could be there at 5.15. Oh, and so wow. from the point that Liam was three months until Graham was three years, she came to my house every day. Wow. And yeah, it was just like, I mean, exactly what we needed. So I, great. I think that... God gives us the situation, you know, what we need to make it work. Yeah. Abby, you want to give her my number? She can come live up here in DC. And- <laughs> I don't think she would travel that far. <laughs> but yeah, I think she is retired from the, the nannying thing, mm-hmm. though. But yeah. That's great. Um, I think, Megan, I don't know how you dealt with like the fear and the worry of having somebody else caring for your kids when they can't defend themselves, they can't speak for themselves. Yeah. You know, it's a little bit scary, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. And I like had a really hard time initially because he was my first and it, that's just terrible to say. It's like my second, I'll leave him with a warm <laughs> <Take> body. <him. laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so I just had like, it was really hard because you're like leaving your little baby with someone else. And, um, it was tough. It was really hard. And then like the first day of the preschool, I dropped him off. I like sobbed. I think I was having like a panic attack um, because he was like the youngest one there. And I was just like, what are we doing? Like, why am I doing this? Um, It does get easier though. And you learn to trust people more, but I do have to say, I think it's really important to still follow your intuition not worry but like observe and if you feel like there's something off like there there was an initial preschool that we tried with him and I would just pick him up and he would constantly be frustrated which wasn't like him but he was like one and a half or or maybe almost two so he couldn't really communicate but like I would pick him up and I could just tell he was frustrated every day and I was like okay this is not like him so fortunately, we got into another preschool that I'd heard great things about. And so I moved him and there was nothing wrong. Like, I don't think there was anything bad going on at this other preschool. I just don't think it was the right fit for yeah. him. And sure enough, we moved him and he just did so much better. So, of course, then I felt even worse. So I was like, great, we had him in this preschool. I don't know what was happening. Like, I don't think it was anything terrible, but obviously he wasn't doing well there. Um, but I am glad that we decided to switch him and make that jump because it was for the better mm-hmm. yeah chloe it never gets better 
She cried. Everything Megan said. She cried. She She cried the day she dropped him off at preschool. I cried the day I dropped her off at college. It's a forever thing. You're going to be crying when you drop (laughs) them off the first time. Well, and that, thank you, Susan. That's a great segue into the next part of this conversation. It really doesn't ever end. You're always putting, unless you have your children with you 24 7 you're always putting them in someone else's care that's why the episode is you're not the only one raising your kids there's coaches Mm -hmm. there's scout leaders there's teachers there's uh parents of friends there's always another adult speaking into your child's life or caring for them so how do we how do we how do we do it without losing our minds you know i actually have some statistics um, according to ourworldindata.org, the average amount of time college-educated moms spend with their kids um, between the ages of 3 and 12 is 120 <sighs> minutes a day. That's here in America. Hmm. For dads, it's 85 minutes a day. Oh, wow. wow. But that is almost twice as much as it was 50 years ago for both male and female. Really? For both, mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Back like in the mid-60s, the amount of time for dads, it was like 20 minutes, mm-hmm. if that. If that, 20 minutes a day. Yeah. That's so interesting. Oh, my gosh. So if you think about it, if your kids are sleeping for 10 hours, so there's 24 hours in a day. If your kids are sleeping for 10 hours, that leaves 14. So that means 12 hours a day are spent away from parents on average. You know, if moms have two hours with them. How am I going to get to know my little guy? (laughs) You're going to be complete strangers. (laughs) No, for real. No, but I mean, my point is that 12 hours, roughly, a day, they're with another adult. So, like... Where do you, the question is then, where do you draw the line about who you allow into your child's life? Mm. You don't want them to be in physical danger, but how much do you protect them as far as like the ideas that they hear, things like that? Yeah. I liked what Megan said. I think it's really important to always have a pulse on your child. Mm. And at one and a half, five, ten, if you see behavior that is outside their norm and it lasts for a certain period of time, you have to question, okay, is this just, you know, a personality thing they're going through or is something actually externally in their environment causing it? Mm. Yeah, I think so, too. I think it depends on age, too, right? Your, who you allow to speak and do things around your toddler is different than your high school senior who's about to be out from under your wing, you know, like that same nanny that took care of my boys for four years. um, She had some interesting thoughts on things that didn't always, you know, go along with what I thought and believed and taught them, but it was never anything that to me was a fundamental problem. I never felt like they were in danger and, um, and frankly, some of the things, because they were so little, they were one and two years old, and it yeah. didn't really matter. They didn't understand it. But like, if you know your child has a teacher who um, espouses something that you don't agree with, do you, or a coach that does that, do you, when do you step in and say, this is not an adult I want in my child's life? Mm. I think I've told this story, but with one of my kids, I actually did pull them out of school and home- homeschooled them for the rest of the year. Was that part of the reason? Uh, it was the teacher. I did not know it was the teacher at the time. I, My daughter was very, she'd come home very angry and agitated. It was third grade. And I just thought, okay, what is going on here? It was the point that was getting kind of disruptive to the family because she just had this personality changed. And I noticed a lot of disorganization. Her backpack would be a mess. There were lots of notes in there that the kids had been passing during the day. And I was like, I went, I did go and talk to the school, but didn't get many answers. Uh, I ended up going, well, you know what? She's just, this is not her. I don't like it. I go by, pull her out. It's third grade. Who cares? Um, I homeschool her a little bit. We really just played. I'll confess that. But um, <laughs> <laughs> at that age, she's so smart. It's not going to hurt her. Mm. And so... By the end of the semester, I still was, I was actually teaching a Friday afternoon, um, we call it Fantastic Fridays, Bible study to that whole class, that whole grade. They would come to my house. Got to the spring, the end of the year, and a couple of the moms were talking, and they said, well, yeah, she's not coming back. And I'm like, who's not coming back? The teacher was not coming back. Mm. It really had been what was going on in the classroom, and it was just really disruptive to my child, and there was a lot of drama. Yeah. And so... You know, but it was a great thing. She and I had really a blast. She went back to the school the next year, and she just did fine. Mm. It was okay. Yeah. 
That's good. So how do you feel about somebody else disciplining your child? Megan, I don't know if you have anybody who's kind of stepped in and, and tried to discipline James in front of you or you got wind of it. I don't think I've seen anyone discipline him in front of me. I'm trying to think. I mean, I've given my friends license of like when they're playing at their house, like if he's not sharing or if he's disobeying, don't just let him run all over your child. Like feel free to step in and tell him he has to share or, or he needs to go in time mm-hmm. out. So I've given certain friends here that I'm close with that license. Um, but I I've never have. seen anyone. How do you really... feel when I discipline him? Oh, well, you're like, I don't care if you discipline him. Okay. You should discipline him. Do you guys ever have an issue? Like if you're together, cause I know my mom and I, I will discipline the kids and she becomes like an echo of what I'm saying. And I have to be like, mom, I got this. Like, I don't need mm-hmm. both of us you know harping on them yeah. or coming down on them right now you no, just... sometimes I'll just let her do it I'll be like can you do it I don't want to do it <laughs> <laughs> well I think that happened last time he was being disrespectful to you and I scooped him up and I said Mm-mm. right wasn't yeah. that what happened last time I think that's what happened probably I mean yeah and Hampton will do the same thing right like if James gets upset or something and he hits me um like in, in, in Hampton sees it instead of me having mm-hmm. to do it, like Hampton will just pick him up and be like, absolutely not. And you're not, you know, doing that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and vice versa. If he does something to him, I'll say that was not nice. You need to go apologize to him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we have an article about what do you do when someone else disciplines your child? So whether it's an in-law or a neighbor, you know, that always happens. Your kids are playing together and they jump in and say something. Um, I think one of the things is to ask yourself, was I missing something? You know, was there something that I didn't see happening as hard as it was? Did I need to hear this or did my child need to hear this? And then if this other adult was in the wrong, how should I have handled it instead of just flying off the handle and be like, don't, you don't have a right to to tell my kid what to do. I think it's, it's tricky. I definitely struggled. Go ahead, Megan. Oh, sorry. One of the things I was going to say is I've had more difficult situations where like he'll be playing with a friend and um I've actually watched this happen where his friend instigated it and yet the friend comes and tattles Mm -hmm. and then the parent kind of looks at me like well what are you going to do about it Mm -hmm. and I'm like get in my head like I just saw this whole situation go down and that was not your child is not explaining that story accurately because I literally saw it happen. Um, So that's a more difficult situation because I feel like the parent expects me to discipline him when I'm, I saw it happen and and I know what happened and I'm not like, I'm going to talk to him about it because he shouldn't retaliate, but it wasn't him who instigated it. Yeah. What were you going to say, Susan? Similarly tough. I've had a situation where a teacher imposed, um, a consequence on a child that I definitely felt was wrong. Mm. And then it's kind of like, okay, are we, is this going to happen a lot? So it just that, and it, it really impacted the child. Mm-hmm. They were kept from doing something they really wanted to do. And I just thought it was really unfair. And I had to kind of swallow that bitter pill. Or again, you have to decide, is this the wrong teacher? Yeah. Or, but sometimes that happens and it's, it's just tough. Yeah. It's like, what do you do? In Megan's case, you, risk a friendship or gonna mm-hmm. like have it out or risk you know well I mean school. what I usually what I usually what I do in that situation is I pull him aside so the the other parent doesn't know what I'm saying to him right but I explain oh, to him like I saw what happened I know you didn't yeah. start that but you still cannot retaliate even if someone does something to you that you don't like but I saw what happened I know that he start you know but I, I just do it so the parent doesn't know what I'm saying that's good yeah. yeah that's good yeah I do think it's important you know talking about the other adults that speak into our child's life or offer discipline it is important to have those friends that you trust mm. you know when, either when you're not around or when you are around and you're looking the other way, uh, or just as another adult in the room, it helps them learn how to listen to any authority figure, not just you. You know, have those friends that you're saying, okay, I trust that we're on the same page here and that you, you're you allowed to, to say it, and hopefully they would yeah. come back to you and say the same thing. We had that years ago. We had an article called The Mom Mafia. Yeah, yeah. And I do think it is good to, okay, did you see what happened? Because I heard about this, and especially yeah. when they get older. What yeah. really was going on at school today? Because my child said this. What did your kids say? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, Chloe, we are so excited for you. Yay. What are you, yeah. like, most excited about, like, for the next few months, like, the pregnancy excited? Oh, my gosh. Well, 
I don't know. I mean, I really just am enjoying it. Like, I've, I've had a pretty good pregnancy so far. Like, it's been really, really great. Um, and tell everybody your due date. Yeah. Oh, yeah. September 25th. Okay. Yep. So I'll put a link in the show notes to her registry. Yeah. And you got, your, you got your first, like, full ultrasound. Uh, yes. Right? Yeah. Yep. I got my first. I got to see his little arms and his little legs. And We are recording this earlier than yeah, it's dropping. So yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's been so fun and I'm just excited for so much. And I don't know, just honestly, this whole podcast has just got me so excited for so many stages of motherhood. And mm-hmm. I don't know, I'm excited for right now too. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, tell us what is most important to you about the other adults that you allow into your kids' lives. We're going to be Auntie Abby and Auntie Susan. And <laughs> no, Auntie you're just going to be Miss. Yeah, yeah you're going to no, be no, Miss. Not just Miss. <laughs> do not like that. You can just call me Abby. You're going to be like, hey, Ab. Ab. I love that. I love it. All right. If you um, tell us via the link in the show notes what you think, you can offer an email to congratulate Chloe if you want. And if you haven't subscribed to the podcast, don't know what you're waiting for because you'll automatically get new episodes every single Monday. And of course, if you have a second to leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, that would be great because it'll help other moms find us. All right. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to the iMom Podcast. iMom is the motherhood program of the nonprofit organization Family First. Along with our fatherhood program, All Pro Dad, we exist to help you love your family well. Subscribe to our daily email, the iMom Minute, by going to imom.com slash subscribe and get tons of great ideas, insight, and inspiration. The iMom Podcast is hosted by me, Abby Watts, along with Susan Merrill, Megan Tigner, and Chloe Blumenthal.